Welcome back to Austin Live. Need some tips for holiday tipping? Consumer Reports did a survey of who's getting tipped the most this Christmas. 59% of housekeepers will get money or a present. 49% of teachers will receive a gift. And 46% of hairstylists will get a bigger tip over the holidays. So looking at those numbers, Consumer Reports says about half of us tip over the holidays, which of course means half of us don't. So we invited Sharon Schweitzer, an etiquette expert, to come in and kind of help us out with this. And it's kind of a minefield. You don't know what's appropriate, who to tip, how much. So what's a good rule of thumb? A good rule of thumb is to provide the equivalent of one session or one visit for that particular service provider. So in other words, if your haircut costs $50, you should tip $50 on top of paying for your haircut when you go like in the month of December. Yes, anytime between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Okay, so you have a little bit of a window there if you start to get a little bit crazy. And you know what, with a few other guidelines, I want you to take a look at these graphics that we found because Emily Post, of course, another big etiquette expert, mm -hmm. and she kind of goes exactly with what you're saying, Sharon. She says for your regular babysitter, tip an evening's pay. For a housekeeper, mm -hmm. one week's pay. For a hairstylist, just like you said, one salon visit or the equivalent of, and a personal trainer, what you would pay for one session. But you know what, when I'm looking at that, that can really add up to a lot of money. And a lot of people really don't have extra cash over the holidays. So if someone can't afford to give money, what would you recommend? Well, here's a couple things I recommend that you do. First of all, always consider your budget. Always consider your own personal finances because it's an individual choice. And that's really important. You don't want to get into a, a difficult situation. You don't want to overextend yourself. So you need to sit down. The first thing I recommend that you do is make a list. Make the list and check it twice. And have priorities on that list, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You've got to prioritize. Look at who are the most trusted people. Who are those that you're very loyal to, who are the people that you see on a regular basis. Whittle the list down if you need to. People are shortening lists. People are becoming very selective. And so if you can't give cash, though, you brought some things that are some ideas, and let's start going through those Absolutely. as far as what we could give as alternatives. All right, let's do that. One of the things that's very important whenever you look at those things is you want to make sure you include a handwritten note with some of your alternatives. These are some examples of beautiful handwritten notes that have have been done that you can provide with your gift. Some of the alternative things that you can do to provide for a gift is you can do candles, you can do soaps. This is a beautiful gift set. The other thing you can do is if you don't want to provide something that'll light, you can do a small votive. You can also provide it with an envelope with something less than you normally would give with a note explaining to that service provider, last year I might have given you $50. This year I can't afford to do that. I'm going to give you $25. But it's not a reflection on the service you've given me. It's because of the economy and the tight times we're in. And Let you know, I know. think a lot of people would also like to give maybe something that is homemade like I see you have a lot of different food items down here and yes. some really cute cookies and other things so so many different options if you're looking for ways to really show someone that you're thankful for their service but maybe you just can't afford to give what Emily Post and Sharon might say is a typical guideline Jason all right Betty please don't whittle me off the list uh,